Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, we're going to be doing a tour of Lessie and Oreo stations on the TTC and GO systems respectively. They're quite close to each other, but are not actually properly integrated together. There's still quite an interesting transportation node here in North Europe. As you can see, I'm currently at Oreo GO station where a lot of work is being done on upgrading the south platform. Now, Oreo GO station only sees a few trains per day, and there's only weekday service on the Richmond Hill line. However, it's still a nice connection and allows people to potentially get off the subway at Leslie Station and hop onto the train to get to work downtown, or vice versa. Now we're on the pedestrian bridge, and you'll be able to see the Highway 401, which is just north of my current location. Highway 401 actually straddles over the station, and the station parking lot is located directly underneath it. For this reason, Oreo is also super accessible for people coming off the highway from the east or west. It allows people to park here and get on a train south to Union Station. As you can see here, despite only getting a few trains per weekday, Oreo actually has quite a few amenities. We have some bicycle parking, a waiting area, and even public washrooms to my right. This kind of mobile home converted type washroom system is something interesting that the TTC could perhaps consider. There's also a temporary ticket office, as well as some presto vending machines, readers, and reload stations. Here you can see the actual platform, which is fairly decent by GO standards, but it doesn't have the tactile it tiles at the edge of the platform, which would be nice to see. Again, here are the public washrooms we had a look at before, which is indeed an interesting feature to have at this station. Just east of Leslie Street is North York General Hospital. As you can see, Leslie is quite a busy street with the highway ramp just down the road, and there's actually an overpass allowing hospital traffic to get across much easier. Here a bus is actually passing over it right there. Buses traveling northbound on Leslie can make use of this overpass to turn around, as well as to serve the hospital traffic. Here we are, at our first station entrance of Leslie Station. This entrance is the one to the first east side of the station. Since Leslie is one of the newest stations in the system, it offers a lot more modern design features than the older ones including accessible ramps into the station. Also take note of the new Presto vending machines available at each entrance of the station. You will also notice that the station is relatively quiet, but this is just a fact about the entire Shepherd line. Here you can see the few maps of the system, as well as the station surroundings. Now let's head into the station itself. We've got some new Presto fare gates, which almost every other station on the DTC has at this point, apart from Yorkdale Station on Line 1. Note on the walls that we have these tiles. This is part of the public art of the station. In each tile is the words Shepherd and Leslie written by a person in a community. Really interesting in my opinion. Now let's head down to the train platforms. As you can see, these nicely designed skylights allow some natural light into the station. You may have noticed that the corridor is extremely long, and that is because the platform can actually be extended to this part of the corridor to allow for 6 car trains on the Shepherd line. That is one thing I do like about the Shepherd line relative to other TTC and Metrolinx projects, it has been nicely planned for the future. Even though it hasn't seen that much ridership, it will be easier to upgrade to higher capacity in the future, especially when the lines eventually get extended west. And as you can see, we can have the Toronto Rocket coming in now. These trains are all operated by a single operator, versus two on other subway lines, due to the automatic train control-esque system we have running here. Also notice the modern, more modern wayfinding system, with the wayfinding bars above the platforms, telling people which direction the train goes and the current station name. These are the nice touches I would like to see in the older stations as well. 
and you can also see a lot of vertical egress in the entry points in each section of the platform. There's actually signs pointing to the ghost station, even though there's no formal connection between the two. You need to go out on the street and walk a few blocks to get there, despite the tracks passing literally right next to the station parallel to Leslie Street. Now, as you can see, the amount of fare gates and the size of the station is absolutely massive, especially considering that none of the stations on the Shepherd Line get that significant of ridership. We also still have fully manned collector booths, which surprises me given how low the ridership is. Now, this is the main entrance of Leslie Station, which is a pretty cool entrance since it's on the side and then drops down onto the subway platform. You can also see part of the traction power substation right here, which is blocked in with these nice glass tiles. I'm gonna walk over so you can see these skylights I pointed out earlier. A lot of people probably see these structures and wonder what they're for, so it's nice to inform you that these are actually what allows the nice lateral light to come into the station. As you can see, this part of Shepherd is actually quite busy with lots of people traveling down the road here, so there should be some people who are willing to take the subway. Now we're actually going to look at something a lot of people aren't aware of. The Shepherd Line actually has a bridge on it, which is enclosed in a tunnel, where the line passes over the Don River just east of Leslie Station. The bridge actually has a park on it, so perhaps this is technically the first rail deck park in Toronto. It's just one of those cool elements that you might not have known about the Shepherd Line, and one that a lot of people don't have the ability to see, so I hope you've enjoyed seeing this. You can see that the Don River just flows right underneath here. And here's the name of the park, Betty Sutherland Trail Park, and a plaque that commemorates some details about the park. Here's a view of the trail leading into the Don Valley, and here's a final view of that tunnel slash bridge, another very interesting element of the Shepherd Line. Let's head back into the station now so we can check out the last exit on the far western edge. Look, this is a bus terminal attached to the station. However, it's really underserved. Currently, only the 51 Leslie route serves this bus terminal, and it's relatively infrequent, so there's not that much service. However, again, there is a lot of capacity for future expansions as services demand it. One thing I would like to see reintroduced on some subway routes is perhaps some supplementary bus service for local passengers. This does exist, but is not currently servicing this bus terminal on Shepherd. Another bus that could come in here once fare integration happens is the GO buses, which will be servicing Oreo Station regularly. These are just some thoughts on how we can better utilize the infrastructure we already have, something the city is frankly not very good at. Look, here's that 51 pulling into the station. Let's head outside the station to take a look at what's out there. Here's a closer look at the new Presto vending machines. I quite like these machines. They can do basically everything we want them to do, and they can be expanded in the future for other purposes as well. Another interesting feature of Leslie Station is the fact that it actually has a shuttle bus provided by IKEA to its location nearby. This is probably the most accessible IKEA on the TTC system. 
Let's look at the surroundings of the station. We have a firehouse here. As well as the IKEA that I just mentioned. There's also a ton of development going on by Concord Pacific near the station, which you can see right past the IKEA. Well, that's it guys. Thanks for watching the first episode of our new Station Focus series. If you have a station you want to know more about, just leave a comment down below. Videos will probably come a little slower in the next couple weeks, but we will be returning full steam in the new year. See you in the next one.